prickly, spiky, pokey, slightly painful. This is how to cook thistles, or basically the best advice that I have for cooking thistles, which for most people, for most foragers, people that enjoy wild food, is going to be the roots. But I'm gonna cover a bunch of different parts too, a couple different parts. First thing you're gonna do is go in, for the roots you're gonna go in the spring or in the fall, preferably before the plant has started to make flower stalks. And you can see I'm using a heavy knife and a, the heaviest glove that I have. And I'm going to chop the leaves off and just kind of make myself a working space here so that I, I have a, a place to dig. And you want to dig preferably the day after a rain, get a heavy shovel, a big spade, and you're going to kind of chisel around the root. And this one was not ideal because it was next to a stump and my soil was really rocky. So you can see that my roots have kind of like split a little bit, uh, but that's okay. And another thing to mention is that a lot of different species, each species is going to be different. And bull thistle is probably my second favorite. These are not my favorite roots, but they're passable and they can make a decent vegetable. They're not as good as the other thistles that I ate in British Columbia about two years ago in the fall. When I, If you saw me on Hulu, uh, on Chefs vs. Wild, I cooked, uh, I'm pretty sure they're meadow thistles, and those things were super tender, just like a carrot. Really, really good. Like, really shockingly good. These are a little bit more chewy. They're more similar to burdock with the bull thistle. They're also a lot more widely available and easy to find, really easy to identify. There's likely other ones that have good roots. I should probably talk to Sam Thayer and get his thoughts on that. So I'm going to take the roots home and I'm going to trim up any kind of extraneous uh, roots on the side to give me something that looks like a root vegetable. And I'm going to wash the dirty roots off outside because I don't want to get that dirt in my sink. So I'll wash them a couple times before I bring them into my kitchen. And I'm just going to go through and trim these, just trim them up, trim off pieces that look like they would be difficult to clean. You also want to keep in mind that as you're trimming these, you're going to want to keep the trimmed ones wet or at least get them into some water reasonably quickly because they can discolor and oxidize after they're cut or after they're peeled. So you can see that water I have there is super dirty. You don't want to be pouring that down your sink. This is something you definitely want to do outside. So just keep trimming them up, washing them around, and you also want to be really careful with these. I only wore a glove on one hand. I will tell you on my right hand that I wasn't wearing a glove. I still got, I was being very careful, and I still got a thorn in one of my fingers. This is about two weeks ago when I filmed this. That thorn is still in my finger, and it's quite painful. So just keep trimming the roots up, washing them, until you're all done. Okay, so I'm going to go over a couple other parts, too. This is really for foraging hard cases. Uh, I know Sam Thayer will eat the midrib out of thistle leaves, and other people have, too. This is, in my opinion, this is kind of a novelty. Sure, you can eat it. For most people, this is not going to be... Uh, probably economical for you from a time and labor standpoint, but I'll go over it. So what you do is you just cut the leaves off and any thorns, and then you have a midrib that you can eat. Okay, thistle shoots. These are a little bit better, and these are going to be similar to a burdock flower stalk. So you're going to take that flower stem. This is two weeks after I harvested the roots there, and you're going to cut off all the leaves, again, wearing your heaviest glove, and you have to be careful to remove every single thorn because blanching is not going to remove these and you're probably just going to want to eat these raw if you try. So then you're going to take a knife and you're going to peel the outer skin off. It's kind of like armor and these actually have to be peeled twice. For these to be tender like a little shoot vegetable just like a burdock flower stalk, I have a video on those too, just search my channel, you're going to want to peel these with a vegetable peeler after these are done. Okay, finally, the roots. The roots are good. 
Like I said before, the Bolthus roots are a little bit more chewy, but I have a great trick that will make just about any species of root that you can harvest uh, taste decent or passable at least, and actually pretty darn good. So after the roots are trimmed, I'm gonna bring them into the kitchen, and now I'm going to trim them into pieces that will allow me to peel them. And these thinner, smaller roots that you're seeing there, those are gonna be the best tasting and the least tough. The crowns are gonna be good too, but those I'm going to save for the special preparation, which is uh, Kimpira, thistle root Kimpira is what I'm gonna go over and show you. And that's gonna be the best thing to do with the crowns because they can be a little bit more tough. But the smaller, more slender roots, you can basically cook just like a carrot. They have a very subtle artichoke flavor because artichokes are related to thistles. They're all in the same family, generally speaking but I'm just peeling with a vegetable peeler. And if you don't have a Kuhn Racon peeler, these are the greatest peelers you'll ever use, or just a Y-shaped peeler. Uh, typical vegetable peelers are terrible, and I don't think anyone should use them. So just trim off any pieces of dirt there. Now for cooking, I'm gonna cut these on the oblique, which is I'm making a 90 degree turn with the root in between each cut, so that each root has um, a couple different facets. It's just a nice, attractive way to cut root vegetables. And then as you're working, you can see I have some water with lemon. You wanna put the roots into the water with lemon uh, to make sure they don't discolor. Now this is how I cut for kinpira. So I'm cutting them into thin slices, cutting on a, a radical bias, and then I'm gonna cut them into julienne. So this is the Japanese tradition of how they cook gobo root or burdock and by cutting them into, by cutting the roots into those thin julienne pieces, you really bypass a lot of the texture, and it's just a wonderful way to cook roots that are a little chewy, because for most of these roots, I wasn't going to be just roasting them, you know, like I would another root vegetable. With the smaller shoots, you can. So I'm going to take a little salted water, there's a little bit of lemon in there, and I'm just going to cook the roots for, cook those julienne pieces for about 10 minutes. Then I'm going to put a little oil in a pan and I'm going to use about equal parts uh, carrots cut the same way and the thistle roots. And the recipe for this is on my site. It's called Kimpira Gobo. It's made with gobo root. You just mix the thistle roots in instead of the burdock. Or you could use a mix of all of them. You could use wild parsnip roots. Just one of the absolute best ways to cook wild roots that you will ever have. Because a lot of people think wild roots are like these tough, stringy things that you would never want to eat. A lot of them can be rendered edible and delicious using this method. So to saute them a little bit, and then I'm going to add some soy sauce. I'm going to add a little bit of my black walnut molasses. You could use maple syrup, you could use sugar, you could use honey. Then I'm going to add a little bit of... Uh, fish sauce and sesame oil. This is kind of open to what you want to do, or actually that was uh, rice wine vinegar there, a little sesame oil. I do like some fish sauce too, a little bit of hot chili, and then I'll add some watercress and call it a day. Fantastic way to cook wild roots. Thanks for watching. If you try cooking some thistle roots, let me know.